we go. Those are nice keeper stone crab claw. Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's Tips and Tricks Thursday. In today's episode, I'm gonna go over how to measure and properly harvest stone crab claws. Before we get into this though, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button, give this video a like, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. All right, everybody, you know what time it is. Let's do this. So the first thing about stone crab claws is the amounts you're allowed to have. The FWC does regulate them. First thing is, is they need to be two and three quarters inches on the very tip of the claw to the end of the first joint. Next thing is the amount of them you're allowed to have. You're allowed to have one gallon of stone crab claws per person, up to two gallons on a boat. And this is for recreational use only. I'm not talking about commercial fishing. I'm going to leave a link to the FWC's recreational guide to stone crabbing down below in the descriptions just in case I miss anything or you would like to read over it at your leisure. You are legally allowed to take both claws off a stone crab as long as they are of legal size. Myself, being more conservation minded, I take one. That way it gives the crab a fighting chance. He doesn't have to go burrow into the sand for the next year or so until his claws grow out and he can start defending himself again. As you'll see in my last video, I did find a small crab. There was no way his claws were of legal size and both of his claws had been removed. This crab had crawled into my trap because of the opportunity to eat the catfish that had been killed by the other crabs in the trap. Other than that, he's just gonna have to prey on stuff that swims by him and he gets lucky and eats and it's gonna be hard for him to grow for the next year, especially being a very young juvenile crab. There are size limits on stone crab and they're placed there by the FWC so that the population of crab can stay healthy. And it makes it so that recreational fishermen can actually go out and fish these and you don't have to just be a commercial fisherman to be able to get to enjoy this, what is really a delicacy on the table. A couple of ways to safely and properly remove the stone crab claw without cracking its shell or killing it. The first thing you have to be wary of is there's three joints on a crab's claw. There is a membrane that are colored in yellow that is in between the second and the third joint. To remove a claw properly, you have to go through that membrane and stick a sharp object, whether it be its own claw or a knife or a screwdriver or something, and wiggle it gently, and then the claw will dislodge itself as nature intended. This is what a crab does anyway as a self-defense mechanism in case it gets into a fight with another crab or it is being attacked by something. It actually sticks its own claw in there and breaks it off. I've seen on several occasions people wringing the claws off crabs and it comes dislodged at the shoulder section that is hooked right on to the thorax, which is the body of the crab. I've labeled this an orange in this drawing. If that section of the claw, which is the shoulder, comes dislodged from the crab, you've killed it. It's gonna die. You have to be very careful, which is why I'm gonna go over these tips right now with you on how to safely remove these so that the crab can go back and thrive, still defend itself, still eat, and the happy crab method that I'm gonna show you is to use the crab's own claw to dislodge the arm part from its body properly. What you would end up doing is you press the claw that you're not going to take against its body and you use the top portion of it to stick it through the membrane, wiggle it around, and it'll dislodge the um, claw that you're wanting to take really easily. And the rest of it will fall down and the claw will come out and then you pitch the crab back in the water. So, 
to break them off what you do is you take the top of this claw you know wedge it right in here it's a self-defense mechanism that they have it's how they break their own claws off of course he's trying to jab cut through my glove now This is how you do this without hurting the crab. Blam, it breaks off, and now he can regrow his claw. So that membrane's tough, or the, the claw is a little bit too big to get in between the joint, or it's just not, not agreeing with you. You simply take a bait knife, puncture the membrane, stick it in there, wiggle it around gently, and it pops right off, like it was meant to happen. Almost like a mechanical reaction happening instantaneously. Very simple. Like I said, this is not a forceful thing. You don't have to jab it in there or nothing. You stick a knife in there, wiggle it around, and it, it comes right away like it was meant to happen. It's nature at its finest works. We're gonna come in here with the knife into this membrane. We're gonna pop it in there, wiggle the knife around, the claw falls off, the crab falls down to the ground. Happy crab. Big keeper claw. As a recreational fisherman, you are allowed to have five traps. They must be labeled with a buoy. The buoy must have a legible R on it, standing for recreational, that is at least two inches tall. The trap must also have somewhere permanently etched into it or fastened to it your name and your address. Me, I etch my name in on the top of the lid just around the areas of the slats where the throat is or you can carve it into the concrete as you're pouring it and it's still wet all of that's good doesn't matter whatever you choose as long as your information is readily available and what this does is this makes it so that should your trap become dislodged from the buoy and it gets pulled up they can figure out whose it is and contact you about it that about does it for this episode hope you enjoyed Hope you learned a little bit about stone crabbing. Hope to see you next Tuesday for our Sunday showdown. We're gonna pull more traps and hopefully we're able to get out offshore. We got some wicked weather happening, but maybe it'll turn around and agree with us. Until next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us. <laughs>